Hello fellow plastic throwers, this is Fulcrum. Now if you're a regular viewer on the channel, you will know that I do like a good airsoft landmine. And in fact, here are my two working airsoft landmines right here. I have an M18 Claymore directional mine replica, and I also have a airsoft bouncing Betty. And in this video, I want to sort of compare the two and describe where I would use one over the other, the pros and the cons. So let's get to it. Now, both of these mines have their own more detailed videos on the channel, so make sure you check them out. But to go over it briefly, the M18 Claymore is a directional mine with an external detonator system, which has a tripwire system. A pressure release switch, which you can use to booby trap crates or any sort of objective at a site. And it also has a remote command detonation, which allows you to set it up in ambushes. Now the bounding mine on the right here, this is designed to just kill as many things as possible because with the claymore it's got quite a narrow kill zone whereas this has a 360 degree kill radius. The large kill zone on the bounding mine makes this mine a lot better suited for area denial compared to the claymore. You can put this mine right out in the open and anything in a 10 meter radius is at risk of setting this off and being hit by it. Basically when this mine is triggered it launches a spring loaded grenade up to waist height. That grenade then fires which then chucks the BBs around in the 360 degree kill radius. Now the Claymore is a lot more versatile and a lot easier to use than the bounding mine, although it is a bit harder to set up because you have all of the ancillaries you have to plug in, whereas the bounding mine is all self-contained. You turn it on, you drop it down and you run. However, the bounding mine is definitely not as reliable as the Claymore. The blast radius can be a bit iffy depending on what surface the mine is sitting on. You really want it on a good, hard, dry sort of dried mud, you don't really want it on spongy grass or moss because it can cause it to misfire or to launch the grenade at a weird angle. Of course since this mine is self-contained it is a lot quicker to set up, ignoring the fact I have to set up a camera, this one would take around 20 to 30 seconds maximum, whereas the Claymore, minimum of a minute. And that depends of course on what you're doing, if you're just putting it down for remote command detonation it won't be as arduous to put down but if you're trying to trip wire something or booby trap something it can take a while and whilst the claymore does have a narrow blast radius it is a lot more reliable at killing things anything within about five meters in front of this within quite a narrow cone i will say a narrow cone of fire they're good as dead they're going to be hit by it and they're going to be walking back to respawn the narrow kill zone of the claymore does make it quite useful in the way that you can aim it you don't have to worry about hitting anyone behind it if, you, if you're sitting behind it yourself or if you've got any teammates nearby so you don't have to worry about stray rounds flying all over the place another downside though with the claymore is because of the narrow kill zone there are some dead zones you can approach it from the rear and even if it fires it's not going to hit you which can make it a bit easier to defuse the bounding mine though once it's armed you can't really get near it to do anything to it you're going to have to blow it up in place by running past it and hope it doesn't hit you there really isn't any sort of switches or buttons or wires you can pull out or at least that you could do in a short period of time because the second you set this off You've got about half a second maximum before it starts firing. And once it jumps outwards, it's it's not like Call of Duty or whatever where you can hit the deck and avoid it. It's like bang bang. You know, you 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 will not be able to dodge it or duck it or avoid it. The bounding mine is a lot harder for the enemy to deal with. They can't go up to it and unplug the detonator plug like on the Claymore. They can just pull the wire out the top of that. They can't do anything of the sort with that. The Claymore is a lot easier to transport than the bounding mine. The bounding mine I have strapped to me on my back and it's a real pain. It's a big lump on you. Whereas the Claymore, I have a bag for it and it's really nice. It's nice and low profile. Although there is a lot of stuff in the bag because as we said before, that is not self-contained. That is and yeah it's 
but it, it's not nice trying to carry that. It's annoying. It swings around, gets in the way. I'd like to have like a big Kydex clip for it. I'll have to look at that in the future. However, one major problem at my local site with this mine here, the bounding mine, is it's very indiscriminate. Of course, a tripwire and a pressure release switch won't be able to tell the difference between friend, foe, dead player, or marshal. But trying to tell your teammates to avoid something with such a large radius of detection radius as this mine is quite difficult. It's a lot easier to tell your teammates where a tripwire is and tell them don't go near that and you'll be fine. Whereas with this, because the detection radius varies so much, I'd say 5 meters minimum. And of course it does depend on the temperature and the weather. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if this could see you 10 meters away on a really cold day. Because it's going to be more sensitive to the, ba the increase of heat from the body heat of people walking around. For example, with the Claymore, in the video Little Green Box of Doom, I put the tripwire down to cover a small, tiny, it was like two foot wide path around a bit of cover, but I left enough space down the side for dead players and marshals to walk past. If I used the boundary mine in the same place, it just wouldn't work because there's so much foot traffic from people spectating and walking around. It's gonna fire on, it's gonna fire when there's no one near it, it's gonna fire at completely the wrong time and it's going to be really, really annoying. Now one benefit of a bounding mine over a sort of conventional omnidirectional mine is not only is it cool as hell, but it allows it to clear any sort of long grass or vegetation. So this can jump out of long grass and fire where there's not going to be any sort of impedance or hindrance to the projectiles. If I wanted to booby trap an objective, it would definitely be the Claymore. If I want to deny a large area of land to the enemy, it would be the Bounding Mine. And also, if I was sneaking behind enemy lines and I wanted something that I could quickly drop down to cause disruption, or if I was retreating or falling back and I wanted to put something down to deter any pursuers, it would be the Bounding Mine, purely because of how quickly you can deploy it. This would just take too damn long. In a defensive game though, the Claymore, I'd say, probably has it. Although, of course, it does depend on where you are. More open space, the bounding mine still wins that. If you have a larger open area, this will allow you to deny a much larger area from the enemy. The Claymore, it's... I don't know. It's The benefit of being able to booby trap things is definitely a big plus. And it's a lot more precise, I suppose. I haven't actually got a kill with a bounding mine yet. I've got six kills with the Claymore, so maybe that's a way of looking at it. Granted, I haven't used this nearly as much. And last time I used it, no bugger encountered it. But I hope this has been of some use to if you are thinking of airsoft mines, whether or not you're thinking about getting a bounding mine or designing a bounding mine or sticking with the humble yet useful Claymore. If you found this video useful, entertaining or whatever, then make sure you leave a like. And if you don't want to miss out on any new airsoft content, then please make sure you subscribe and enable notifications. And as always, guys, play fair, play safe, take care.